Kellogg's Pep, the super delicious cereal, presents The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Using a solution of intensely radioactive kryptonite, which is Superman's mortal enemy, a brilliant but crazed Nazi scientist named Der Teufel created an atomic monster able to generate tremendous destructive power within his body. Teufel sent the human monster, a young American-educated German using the name Henry Miller, to America, where, as his first assignment, he was to find and conquer Superman. Speaking perfect English, Miller secured a position as a reporter on the Daily Planet and was introduced to Clark Kent, who, as we all know, is in reality Superman. In the presence of the kryptonite in Miller's blood, Kent became momentarily dazed and irrational. Believing that he was losing his mind, Lois Lane had him taken to a rest farm, from where the Man of Steel escaped that evening. Returning to the seemingly deserted planet office, he found Miller rifling Lois's desk and challenged him. Having a good time, my friend? Superman. Well, is that all you've got to say? No. I'll have something more to say in just a moment. Quickly, Miller's hands dart into his jacket pockets, fumbling for the metal mesh gloves and electronic throat converter that will transform him into a deadly atom man. And unaware of his great danger, Superman stands in the doorway, arms akimbo, a disdainful smile playing about his lips. You're reaching for a gun, Miller. You're wasting your time. You'll see what I'm... Someone's coming just by luck. Don't move, Miller. Stay where you are. I've never seen that gym. Look! Superman. Good evening, Lois. Jim. Oh, well, leaping lizard. What are you doing here, Superman? I caught this man rifling your desk. What man? Why, he's Henry Miller. He's our new reporter. I can explain. Stay where you are. As you wish. Superman is making a great to-do about nothing, Miss Lane. I missed my gold cigarette case at dinner. It's quite valuable, and I happen to be very fond of it. I thought that I might have left it in my desk, so I came back for it. Uh, this is my first day at the planet, you know. And in the dim light, I must have mistaken your office for mine. What's that? Yes, my office is right next to Miss Lane. That's Clark Kent's office. Oh, he's right, oh, no. man. No, he's right. Clark has been acting very strange lately, staying away from the office for days at a time. And Perry White finally got fed up and fired him, and he hired Mr. Miller to take his place. So that's it. Yeah, and it's a dirty trick if you ask me. Well, it looks as if I owe you an apology, Mr. Miller. Oh, that's quite all right. I can see where my being in Miss Lane's office looks suspicious. It was a perfectly natural mistake. Hey, what's cooking, Superman? How'd you happen to be here tonight? Oh, uh, why, I, I dropped in to see Kent. To see Kent? Yes, oh, I... Are you and he working on something together? Well, in a way, Jim. That's very interesting. Is it, Mr. Miller? Uh, why, you're a very per- famous person. Kent must be very clever to work with. Oh, he sure is. I think Miss Lane would know it by this time. But no, she makes up her mind he's seeing things and has him sent away to a rest farm. Now, Jim, I did it for his own good. As I said, Clark has been acting very strange. And this afternoon, right in this office, you were here, Jim. And you too, Mr. Miller. I remember. He became positively irrational. He seemed dazed, and, and he said a lot of things that just didn't make any sense at all. Well, so what? He probably had something on his mind. Of course. Kent's as sane as, well, as I am, Miss Lane. You had no right to send him away. There, you see, Miss Lane. I did it for his own good, Jim. I thought he'd, well, uh, I'd get a lot of good out of a stay at the Grady Rest Farm. You are much too hasty. I'll see that he's released. Oh, you will? Yes, at once. I... I've got to be running along. A friend of mine is waiting for me. That is, if you're quite satisfied, I'm not a deadly criminal, Superman. Well, Miss Lane and I both seem to have been a bit hasty today. Sorry, Miller. No hard feelings, I hope. None at all. This has been a most instructive evening. Most instructive. What do you mean? Meeting Superman and all that. Well, good night, everyone. Good so night, long. Good night. Uh, you going to the rest farm and get Mr. Kent out now, Superman? What? Oh, yes, Jim. I, you know, I'll just sit down a moment. I... What? Hey, what? What's the matter, Superman? The matter? Yes, don't you feel well? Is something wrong with you? Wrong? I don't know. Alarmed, Lois and Jimmy stare at the broad-shouldered man of steel who sits heavily in a chair, his eyes slightly glazed, and a strange weakness flowing through his body. He hears Lois and Jimmy dimly. What is it, Superman? Yo, what's the matter? As from the back of his mind, a voice, his own voice, speaks to the man of steel. A strange weakness. It's the same as when you were in the presence of the kryptonite. Superman, say something. What's wrong? Yes, what is wrong? earlier today, right here in Miss Lane's office. Oh, you feeling all right? What's the matter? And suddenly this terrible weakness. 
Are you ill? Can we do something? No, no, thanks. I... I'll be all right. I can't understand. There's no grip tonight around here. Send the back to the Okay. Gosh, I can't understand it. I can't understand it. Neither can you. What's happening? Are there other things? Things beside grip tonight that can weaken you? Would you like me to call a doctor? A uh, doctor? No. No, no, of course not. Thanks, Jim. There. Do you feel any better? Oh, yes. Yes, thanks. Much. That ring. It may be... Oh, oh don't try to get up yet. Rest a little bit longer. Oh, I'm, I'm all right now. Quite all right. Excuse me, Lord, will you? Uh, come into Kent's office a moment, will you, Jim? Oh, sure. You bet. Shall I come, too? No, no. Stay where you are, please. We'll be just a moment. Gosh, what is it, Superman? What happened? Close the door, Jim. Oh, Sure. Now, listen. Would you like to do something for me? Oh, golly, sure. Of course. What is it? Miss Lane is wearing a new ring. It has a green stone. A green stone? Yes. It's on the little finger of her left hand. I want you to get it for me. Well, you want me to get Miss Lane's ring? That's right. Well, why? What for? Never mind. I'm asking this as a personal favor. Will you do it? Well, well, sure. Then take it to Dr. John Millicent. His laboratory is in the science building at Metropolis University. Oh, I know where it is. I took something there from Mr. Kent a few days ago. But why... Never mind the questions. Just get the ring and rush it to Dr. Millicent. Tell Miss Lane I admired it and, and want to copy it or something. Oh, okay, I'll get it. Good. But are you going to get Mr. Kent out of that, that rest farm? You take care of the ring and I'll take care of Kent. Is that a deal? Oh, it sure is, and thanks a million. I'm awful worried about him. So am I. What? Oh, nothing, nothing, Jim. Just get Miss Lane's ring to Dr. Millicent as fast as you can. So long now. Oh, wait. The door isn't that way. This window will do. So long, Jim. Up! Up! And away! <laughs> Leaping into the dark, star-filled sky, the Man of Steel streaks from the Planet Building and heads for Metropolis University to await Jimmy's arrival with Lois Lane's ring. Is it possible that someone has given Lois a ring with a stone made of kryptonite? In the laboratory of Dr. John Millicent, Superman stands some 20 feet away from the white-haired scientist who is examining Lois Lane's ring under a microscope. Evidently satisfied, Millicent leaves his stool and approaches the man of steel who steps back hurriedly. Wait, doctor. Don't come near me. It's all right, Superman. This ring didn't cause those weak spells. It didn't? You mean the stone isn't kryptonite. It's a type of milky jade. Jade? Well, then why did I start to lose my strength twice today in Miss Lane's office? I felt exactly as I did when I was near the kryptonite. That's strange. I don't understand it. Not being able to understand it, I'm worried. If things like this keep happening... Don't lose your head, my boy. But, Doctor, nothing else in the world can affect me like that. Nothing but kryptonite. Doctor, I think Der Teufel has begun his plot against me. Now, wait a minute. I... I can't wait any longer. The only thing that can save me now is the atomic detector you're developing for me. With that to warn me of the approach of the kryptonite, I'll at least be able to get away before it overcomes me. You said it would be ready this evening, is it? No, and it may never be. What? What do you mean? I'd gladly give ten years of my life if I didn't have to say this, Superman, but... Well, we ran into difficulties just when we thought the detector was completed. You mean... We haven't been able to solve the problem yet, and frankly... Well, I don't know if we ever will be able to. Great Scott. What can I do now? What can I do? Helplessly, Superman stares at Dr. Millicent, his one last hope of protection against the kryptonite seemingly gone. And unknown to the Man of Steel... The danger he fears is even closer to him than he suspects, due to an error he himself made in Lois Lane's office. At this very moment, Henry Miller, the dread atom man, is in a telephone booth, conveying an important message to the brilliant, half-mad Nazi scientist at the other end of the wire. Teufel, it is I, Miller. We have nothing to worry about from now on. Yes, that's right. Well, I made a wonderful discovery tonight. I know exactly how to contact Superman whenever you decide to get rid of him. Of course I know what I'm saying. Yes, yes, I'll be right over. Goodbye. What does the Atom Man mean? How can he contact Superman at will? Every moment is tense now, fellows and girls, as the greatest menace the world has ever known draws closer to the Man of Steel and to all civilization. As we continue now, in a shabby basement room of a metropolis tenement, Henry Miller is telling Teufel of an important discovery he made at the Daily Planet that evening. Disguised in a black wig and drooping mustache, his skin-dyed olive, 
The Teufel's frog-like eyes blaze behind thick-lensed spectacles as he interrupts angrily. What? You say Superman appeared at the Daily Planet this evening? Yes, I was going through Miss Lane's desk as you told me to, trying to find some clue as to how the paper contacted Superman. And suddenly he was there. And you let him get away? I had to, Toy, for you see... What do you mean you had to? Did you not have your metal gloves and the throat converter with you? Yes, but... but... Nothing, you had only to slip them on, touch the switch on the converter, and such atomic power would have poured from your fingers that Superman would have fallen helpless at your feet. Fool, blockhead! Conquering Superman means everything to us, everything! Once he becomes our slave, the rest of the world will fall into our laps like ripe plums. I know, but I had to let him get away tonight. Just as I was about to put on my gloves and converter, young Olsen and Miss Lane came in. You should have destroyed them, too. I didn't dare to. You told me to act with the utmost secrecy until Superman was in our hands. I said, if it was possible, can you not think at all for yourself? Now Superman has escaped you. Who knows when and where he will return? I know how to make him return. <laughs> if I hear you correctly, did you say you know how to find Superman? I do. How? Tell me. Stop grinning like a fool and talk. I can reach him through Clark Kent. Clark Kent? The Daily Planet report. <laughs> yes. Kent is the planet's contact with Superman. I found that out tonight. He is. How do you know? Superman came to the planet to see Kent. He told Olsen and Miss Lane that he did. And he admitted that he and Kent were working on something together. So, that is very interesting. So Clark Kent is the Daily Planet's contact with Superman. Well, I can believe that. Kent is very clever. Well, perhaps you did not fail completely after all. Of course I didn't. All we have to do is grab Kent, take him somewhere, and make him understand that his life depends on his bringing Superman to us. Ha! And have every policeman in Metropolis searching for us? Nine. That is the way for men without brains, for stupid gangsters. What? Silence. What? Now listen to me. This is what you will do. Begin tomorrow. When you report to the Daily Planet, you will cultivate Kent. Cultivate him? Yeah. Make him your friend. Flatter him, but not too obviously. Then, once he has become your friend, it should not be too difficult to have him arrange a meeting with Superman. Or we can invent some story of a great trouble in which you are involved and from which only Superman can save you. <laughs> you see? <laughs> yes, and it ought to work. Yeah. And with the power I have given you, we shall rule the world together. Uh, go now, it is late. Go home and sleep, and in the morning you will begin with Kent. All right, Teufel, I... W Wait, I just remembered something. Yeah? This evening at the Daily Planet, when I was leaving, I passed close to Superman. I noticed that he turned pale, and his eyes seemed to glaze. Oh, yeah? Yes, and, <laughs> and when I got to the door of the city room, I looked back. He collapsed into a chair, and Miss Lane and young Olsen were asking him if he was sick. He was affected by the kryptonite in your blood. If it had been in its original form, he would have lost consciousness. Yes, I know, but tell me, are you sure that nobody else is affected by it? Of course I am. Did I not walk with it? On contact, a large piece of it will burn the skin, but until its atomic energy is released, it is harmless to everyone except Superman. Then why was Clark Kent affected by it? What is this? Kent was affected? Yes, this afternoon in Miss Lane's office. Kent came in and was introduced to me. He was looking fine, he was in good spirits... But the moment he came near me, he turned pale, his eyes glazed, and he collapsed into a chair, exactly as Superman did this evening. Yeah, yeah, go on. At first I thought he was having a heart attack, but everyone there said that he was sound as a rock and nothing like that had ever happened to him before. So it must have been the kryptonite in my blood. And if that's the case, how can I get friendly with him? I won't be able to get near him without... Wait, could it be? Could what be? Himmel. Could it be that Clark Kent is Superman? Clark Kent, Superman? What are you talking about? Yeah, the more I think of it, the more I'm convinced that we have stumbled on the most closely guarded secret in the history of civilization. Superman's identity. Yeah, now that I look back, when I myself was involved with Superman, Clark Kent also appeared. Not once, but on a number of occasions. Teufel, it's incredible. And tonight, you learned from Superman himself that Clark Kent is his contact with the Daily Planet. If Kent is Superman, making contact with himself would be easy, Nine. Yes, of course, but... I know what you are about to say. We are not certain. That's right. Then we will make certain. We will prove it to ourselves beyond any doubt. Oh, listen carefully. I have discovered that the alpha rays in kryptonite do not penetrate lead. Tonight, I will prepare for you a vest treated with a special tincture of lead. 
It will cover your heart and your main arteries and prevent the emanations of the kryptonite in your blood from escaping. It is these emanations, I am certain, that weakened Superman when he was in your presence. I don't understand. Do not interrupt. Tomorrow morning at the Daily Planet, you will approach Clark Kent wearing the lead-treated vest. If he is not affected in your presence, leave and remove the vest. When the opportunity arises, approach him again. If then he is affected, he will have positive proof. And when we have that proof? <laughs> then we have Superman. <laughs> exactly where we want him. If we are right, if Clark Kent is Superman, it would be dangerous to carry the gloves and converter with you because of his X-ray vision. You think of everything, don't you, Teufel? At the moment, I am thinking of only one thing, my young friend. I am thinking of final victory over the so-called man of steel. I am thinking of ruling the world as no living man His frog-like eyes blazing with something close to madness. The Teufel, whose name means the devil, prepares to expose Superman's double identity. It is not quite 9.30 the following morning. Clark Kent, summoned by a telephone call from Jimmy Olsen, enters the city room of the Daily Planet and proceeds to Editor Perry White's office. Good morning, Chief. Good morning, Jim. Morning. Oh, hello, Mr. Kent. Gee, it's swell to see you back at the planet. He's not back. He's just paying a brief call. That's oh. right. Jim, you said there was a cable. Oh, why don't you two kiss and make up? This place ain't... ain't uh, isn't busy. the same without Mr. Kent, Chief. I expect my reporters to spend their working hours reporting. Theory with which Mr. Kent doesn't seem to agree. Give him his cablegram. Oh, okay. Here it is, Mr. Kent. It's from Army Intelligence in Berlin. Oh, it is. Uh-huh. Good. Maybe they... Oh. Maybe who... What? Just a minute. Now, let me remind you, Kent, if that cable has to do with any story you were working on while you were a member of my staff, I'm entitled to it. Well, that's a relief. Huh? What is? Oh, all my troubles are over. Well, they are? Uh-huh. What troubles? Their Teufel is dead. The mm-hmm. kryptonite is gone for good, and now I can stop worrying about the Atom Man. Well, what Atom you Man? You say Teufel is dead, Kent? That's what Colonel Greeley says. Apparently, they traced him to a cave in the Black Forest in Germany where there'd been a terrific explosion. They caught a Nazi, a former Gestapo man, trying to sneak out of the woods. He told our men what had happened, hoping to save his own neck. Well, what did he tell them? That Teufel had been experimenting with a piece of kryptonite, trying to create an atom man. A what? An atom man. But we can forget all that now. Teufel blew himself and several other Nazis in the cave to kingdom come, and the kryptonite was destroyed, too. Ah, oh, yes, sir. All Superman's worries are over. But, but, what? Quiet, Olsen, quiet. Kent, this is a terrific story. Police all over the world were looking for Teufel. This cablegram gives us a scoop. It hasn't been on the teletype yet. Uh-huh. You want me to write naturally, it? Naturally, naturally. What are you standing there grinning like a day? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. If I take you back, do you think you can attend to business and let Superman take care of himself? Well... He really doesn't need your help, you know. <laughs> That's what you think, Chief. Well, I'll try to be good. Come on, Jim, let's get to work. Yes, sir. This is more like it. Hot dog. Uh, just a minute, Cat. Yes? I uh, I told that new man, Miller, to take your office. Oh. Uh, when he comes in this morning, uh, give him a desk in the city room. Okay. Come on, Jim. Oh, see, I feel like the man in the death house who just got a pardon from the governor. Well, I don't get it, but as long as you feel good, it's okay by me. Oh, there's Miller coming in now. Huh? You've got to tell him about the switch. Uh, let me handle it, Jim, huh? No sense causing any hard feelings. Poor Miller hasn't hurt anyone. Smiling for the first time in days, Clark Kent steps forward to meet the one human being on the entire face of the earth who has it within his power to destroy him. Learning that Clark Kent and Superman had both become dazed in Miller's presence, Teufel reached the startling conclusion that Kent and Superman were one and the same person. To test his theory, Teufel treated Miller's vest with a tincture of lead and explained it to him, This vest will prevent the emanations of the kryptonite in your blood from escaping. If Kent is not affected when you wear the vest in his presence, but is affected when you are not wearing the vest, then we will know he is Superman. As we continue now, we find the slim, blonde atom man wearing the leaded vest at the Daily Planet, where he is talking with Clark Kent in the latter's office. Listen. I heard that Mr. White changed his mind about firing him, Mr. Kent. I guess that means I'm through, huh? Oh, no, not at all, Miller. No, we can use another reporter, and the chief thinks you'll make a good one. Well, that's a relief. I know I'm no great shakes, but you're one of the best reporters in the country. And here I was, Mr. Nobody, taking over your office and expected to fit your shoes. Believe me, I'm tickled pink to see you back. Well, thanks. Come on, we'll uh, find your desk out in the city room. Swell. Well, let's see. Well, there's a vacant desk next to Jim Olson's. How does that strike you? Couldn't be better. I like Jim. Oh, he's a grand youngster. Got the makings of a first-class reporter, too. Mm-hmm. I, uh... <laughs> 
I ought to warn you, though, Jim can ask more questions per minute than any six other humans. <laughs> I'm used to that. I've got two kid brothers. Oh, that's they're all. pretty good on the question stuff, too. They live here in Metropolis with you? No, they're out in California with my mother. Oh. They're another reason I'm glad I'm holding a job. Those kids use up a lot of shoe leather. Yeah. I bet they do. Ah, oh, here we are. Say, this looks okay. You'll uh, probably find a lot of accumulated junk in this desk if, if you do just dump it in the basket. Huh? Okay, thanks loads, Ken. Not a bit. Uh, by the way, I wonder if I could ask you a favor. Of course. What is it? Well, I've never worked on a big paper like this, and naturally, I'm anxious to make good. Would you mind if I came to you for advice now and then? Why, certainly not. Pop in any time. Thanks again, Ken. Oh, I really... Hi, Mr. Ken. Hi. Hi. Hello, Hi. Jim. I'm going to be your neighbor. Oh, that's well, Mr. Miller. Look, let's drop the Mr. Miller stuff. Everybody calls me Hank. Okay, Hank it is. <laughs> well, I'd better dump my coat in the locker and get to work. Thanks for everything. I'll see you later. Okay. You know, he seems like a pretty nice guy, Mr. Kent. Yes, he does. Acted very decently about being moved out of my office. He... Oh, good morning, Lois. Hi, Miss Lane. Good morning, Clark. Jim. Listen, what does I hear about the Teufel being killed? Well, that's mm-hmm. right, in Germany. And the piece of kryptonite he stole was blown up with him. Well, I hate to say it, but it's a good thing. Teufel was as bad as they come. Well, now you can stop worrying about Superman, Clark. You're telling me. Well, i got to get to work. See you later, Jim. You bet, Mr. Kent. Now that you're back on the job, what happens to Henry Miller? Oh, he stays on. He's taking the desk next to Jim's. That's good. The poor fellow was right in the middle. Yes, and he needed the job. Supports a mother and two brothers. Oh, is that so? Mm-hmm. Well, I'll see you later. Incidentally, Miss Lane, you and I have a little matter to discuss. Oh, have we? Yes, have we? It concerns my having been dragged off to that rest farm. Oh, um, that. That, uh, yes. Yes, well, uh... Can't we forget it, Clark? It's a little hard to forget the barred windows. I I just thought I was doing the right thing, honestly, Clark. <laughs> all right, all right, we'll forget it. How about lunch? Well, pick me up at noon, will right. you? Right. Entering his office, Clark Kent closes the door behind him. A few minutes later, Henry Miller, having removed his lead-treated vest and placed it in his locker, returns to the city room and walks past Jimmy Olsen. Hey, Hank, this is your desk. Yeah, I know. I just remembered something I wanted to ask Kent about. I'll be back soon, Jim. Oh, okay. Kent wasn't affected by the kryptonite while I was wearing my vest. Now we'll see what happens when I'm not wearing the vest. Come in. Are you very busy, Mr. Kent? No, not at all. Come in. Thanks. Now, what's on your mind, Miller? Uh, Mr. White asked me yesterday to do a story on the candidate for mayor for the Sunday sheet. I was wondering how long to make it. How long? Yes, I suppose we use a lot of photographs and... I... What's the matter, Mr. Kent? Matter? Yeah, you're you're looking at me so strangely and you're very pale. Is something wrong? I don't know. I feel so... So... So what? So weak... As if all my strength were leaving me. Good gosh, can I do something? I can't understand. Get me some water, please. Sure, of course. Then don't try to move, Kent. Kent. Jim! Miss Lane, something happened to Mr. Kent. What? What is it? I don't know. Get him a glass of water. Hurry, he's pale as a ghost. Where is Miss Lane? Miss Lane? Miss Lane? As Jimmy rushes for a glass of water and Lois dashes from her office, Henry Miller hurries to the locker room where he once more dons his lead-treated vest. Then he returns to Kent's office, where Jimmy and Lois are hovering anxiously around Kent's chair. How do you feel now, Clark? I drink some more water, Mr. Uh, Kent. I'll be all right. How is he, Miss Lane? I don't know. You were here when it happened, weren't you, Mr. Miller? Yes, we were talking. And all of a sudden, he turned pale and said he felt weak. Well, jeepers. The same thing happened to him yesterday. I can't understand it. It's just like when the kryptonite... The kryptonite? Oh, but there isn't any here. I know there isn't. What does he mean? He's becoming irrational again. Just like he did yesterday, he gets illusions that Superman is in danger. Listen, Jim, you better call a doctor. Okay, I'll call Doc Jennings. You better get the chief, Miss Lane. He's out of the office. Oh, dear, Superman should have left him at the rest farm. He's losing his mind. I know he is. I'm sure it is. That isn't anything so serious, Miss Lane. How do you feel now, Mr. Kent? Oh, much better, thanks, Miller. Sorry to have been so much trouble. You are feeling better, Clark? Oh, sure. Oh, I'm sure? Okay. Positive. I'm perfectly all right now. He isn't? I, I can't Gosh, understand what, what happened to me. Have you been examined by a doctor lately? Why, yes. No. I'm in perfect no, shape. Mind. We can't wait that long. Have a 
Dr. Jennings is out on a case, Miss Lane. He won't be available for a couple of hours. I don't need a doctor, Jim. I feel fine. Now, look here, Clark Kent. You are going to be examined by a physician, and that's all there is to that. Well, I think now, Miss Lane is right, Mr. Kent. I certainly am right. Now, look... All right, all right, all right. I know that look in your eye, Lois. I'll go see my own doctor. Good. Get your hat and come on. You too, Jim. Well, now, wait a minute. I don't need a bodyguard. Jim and I are going with you, Clark, to make sure that you don't change your mind. Now, okay. come on. Come along now. Well, if Mr. White gets back before we do, will you tell him what happened, Mr. Miller? Yeah, all right, Miss Lane. I hope you'll be all right, Mr. Kent. I'm all right now. Be back soon. So long, Hank. So long, Jim. They're gone. Seven. Four. Three. Seven. Nine. It worked. Kent was affected again. You must be... Teufel, this is Miller. Listen. No names, you fool. I'm sorry, but but listen, you were right. He is the man you thought, the one we want. Ah, you are positive? Yes. When I wore the vest, he wasn't affected. But when I took it off, he became dazed and almost collapsed, just like he did yesterday. Good. Sir, good. That makes it much simpler. How are you getting along with him? Fine. I'm sure that he likes me. <laughs> and trusts me. So does Jim Olson. I said no names. Now, listen to me. The young one you just mentioned... The other one is very fond of him. If we can find a way of getting the young one to the beach house... I don't know how I can do that. A story. A what? The promise of a big newspaper story. You are a reporter, are you not? Now listen closely. This is what you are to do. You will go to your editor and tell him that you received the telephone. Now that Clark Kent and Superman are one and the same person, the Teufel gives the Atom Man final instructions. It's just an hour since Jimmy Olsen and Lois Lane accompanied Clark Kent to a doctor, and Henry Miller, the Atom Man, received final instructions from Der Teufel. Now, as Jimmy returns to the Daily Planet City Room, Miller hails him. What's with Mr. Kent, Jim? Huh? Oh, the doctor couldn't find a thing wrong with him. He figured he might have eaten something that didn't agree with him. He made him promise to stay home and rest till tomorrow. I'm glad it's nothing serious. Well, let's go. Huh? Go where? Oh, I didn't tell you, did I? I got a tip on a big story after you left, and Mr. White said I could take you along. Come on, we've got to rush. Oh, a big story? Well, what is it? I'll tell you on the way. I've got a car waiting. I didn't want to go without you. Well, gee, that's awful nice of you, Hank. You and Mr. Kent have been swell to me, and I appreciate it. Also, this is a pretty long ride, and I like company. <laughs> Especially your company, Jim. Oh, gee whiz. Thanks. Unaware that his companion is the deadly atom man, Jimmy Olsen follows Henry Miller from the Daily Planet. Where is Miller taking the boy reporter? And what is the trap now being set for Superman? The Teufel's carefully laid plans are rushing to a startling climax. As we continue now, 40 miles north of Metropolis... Miller, the deadly atom man with the unsuspecting Jimmy at his side, is driving a small roadster through lonely, hilly country skirting the sea. It is mid-afternoon. The sky is gray and overcast. Listen. Gosh, Hank, you're as bad as Mr. Kent. What do you mean, Jim? Well, he always acts mysterious, too. We've been driving about an hour now, and you still haven't told me what this big story is we're on. <laughs> I was afraid if I did, you wouldn't want to go through with it. We may run into trouble. Yeah, what kind of trouble? I'll give you a hint. Who's the most dangerous man in the world? In the whole world? Uh-huh. Gosh, I don't know. Hitler? No, he's probably dead. That Nazi scientist, De Teufel? No, he's dead, too. Is he? Sure, didn't you hear about it? Mr. Kent got a cablegram from Germany this morning. Teufel blew himself up experimenting with the piece of kryptonite that was stolen from the Metropolis Museum. He did? Mm-hmm. He was supposed to be trying to create an atom man. An atom man? Mm-hmm. Can you imagine anything so goofy? And you want to hear something else funny? Mr. Kent was scared to death that Teufel could do it. Ah, it's ridiculous. Well, sure it is, but we couldn't make Mr. Kent see it. Does Kent still believe that nonsense about Teufel and an atom man? Well, he did up to this morning when he got the cablegram saying Teufel and the kryptonite were blown to kingdom come. Now he's like a new man. Uh-huh. Ah, uh, sharp curve coming up. Hang on. Look. We kind of got off the subject, Hank. You were going to tell me what this big story is we're on. We didn't get off the subject. Well, sure we did. You said... I said our story was tied up with the most dangerous man in the world. And you guessed who that is. The Teufel. Uh-huh, that's right. What? You're kidding. The Teufel is dead. The tip I got said he's very much alive. And in a hideout somewhere around here. Around here? 
No, wait a minute. What? How? <laughs> Take it Please. easy, Jim. You'll have plenty of opportunity to get scared <laughs> later. Later? Well, I'm scared right now. I, I mean, I'm excited. Listen, who told you Teufel is alive and, and hiding around here? A very good friend of mine who knows all about Teufel. Who? You'll find out. Let's see, we're 43 miles out. We ought to be coming to a small woods. There's a map in the glove compartment in front of you. Get it, will you? It's drawn in a piece of paper. Okay. Well, I don't see any... Say, what's this, Hank? What? Well, these gloves. They look... Sure, they're made out of metal. Meshed metal. Put them back. What? I said put them back, you little punk. Hey, wait a minute. Who are you calling a punk? Sorry, Jim. Those gloves happen to be very valuable to me. Never mind the map. There are the woods now. Well, what are you blowing the horn for? The road's empty. This is where we're to meet my friend. Ah, hey, there. look out. Two men jumped out on the road. Those are my friends. They were waiting in the woods. Are you sure? They look pretty tough. Especially the big guy in overalls. <laughs> They're tough, all right, as you'll find out. I'll find out? Well, what do you mean? Ah, you have young horses. Good, Miller. It was easy. Huh? Say, who are you and how do you know me? Oh, you do not remember me, Olsen. <laughs> you and I, ya, yeah, and Miss Lois Lane, too, spent quite a bit of time together about a year ago. What? You're a teufel. You dyed your skin and you're wearing a black wig and mustache, but... But I know you. Bravo, Olsen. And now... Hey, Hank, what is this? You said these were your friends. <laughs> they certainly are. Very good friends. What? What? You look very stupid with your mouth open, Olsen. If you will step out of the car, please, we shall go to a place where we can renew our acquaintance. What? Hey, now, wait a minute. Give me a hand with him, Willie. Just leave him to me, Sergeant. Let go. Cut it out. Let go, I say. What's the idea? Hey, hey, don't let... Oh, now I know. You're with him, you you dirty Nazi. Help. Help. Stop me, Stoyce. Take him to the cabin, Billy. I will be there shortly. Okay, Teufel. So far, you've done well, Miller. Now we are ready for Superman. You have the mesh gloves and the coat converter? They're in the glove compartment. Good. And Kent is at the Daily Planet? No, he's home. His doctor thought he needed a rest. Ah, you have his telephone number? Yes. You're sure that this will work, Teufel? You have nothing to fear. You need only turn the switch on the converter and such atomic power will pour from your gloved fingers that Superman will be destroyed. I hope you're right, Teufel. I am always right. Go now, drive to the beach house, and make no mistakes. I won't. What will I do after it's over? I will be there to tell you. All right. Goodbye, Teufel. <laughs> Leaving the Teufel standing in the road, Henry Miller, the Atom Man, drives rapidly away. A half hour later, Clark Kent's telephone rings. Hello? Are you Mr. Kent? Yes. This is Henry Miller. Listen, Jim Wilson and I came out here on a story. Yes, I know. The chief told me. Well, we ran into trouble. Bad trouble. What happened? Jim. Yes? What about Jim? <laughs> Mr. Kent, you've got to do something. I, I wanted to call the police, but Jim insisted I call you. Well, tell me what's wrong. Where are you? I, I haven't time to tell you. They'll be back any moment. They they said they're they're going to shoot us. Where are you, Miller? Uh, at a beach house a few miles north of Grant Crossing. But you've got to hurry. All right, all right. Take it easy. Miller. Take it easy. A beach house north of Grant Crossing? Yes. I'll be there in a few minutes. A few minutes? It's 50 miles from Metropolis. Oh, uh, I... Well, I I'll contact Superman. You and Jim sit tight, Miller. Don't worry. Superman will be right out. Hanging up, Clark Kent swiftly resumes his true identity of Superman, never suspecting that he is being lured into a trap, a trap baited with Jimmy Olsen. Cabin set on a vast, lonely beach, edged by a forest. Henry Miller, the Atom Man, has just completed his phone call to Clark Kent. Now, swiftly, he straps a small square metal box around his throat, directly over his jugular vein. This is the converter, in which a tiny electronic tube at the turn of a switch will flash an impulse to the kryptonite in his blood and send atomic energy rushing to his fingertips from where it will emerge in an unbroken stream of terrible, shattering power. Quickly, then, he pulls on his meshed glove of platinum and thorium, throws a scarf around his neck, and has just time to clasp his strangely gloved hands behind his back as a strong burst of wind is heard above the cabin, and then a thud as of a giant dropping to earth. A timeless moment, and the door of the cabin is flung open, and Superman in blue costume and red cape strides into the room. Miller! What happened? Where's Jim? Welcome, Superman. All right, never mind that. Where's Jim, I say? He's with the Teufel. What? 
Der Teufel? Yes. What are you talking about? What's that on your throat? You'll see in a moment, Superman. Miller. Miller, what are you doing? What's that? That strange noise. And what are those gloves you're wearing? You'll see that in a moment, too. They stop what happened to your voice. Miller! You can stop calling me Miller from now on. Let me introduce myself. I am the Atom Man. No. No! Don't try to move. You're helpless now. No. Stand back. Don't come near me! Raising his grizzly gloved hands, the Atom Man slowly advances on the Man of Steel, who, helpless, stands rooted to the spot. As all the miraculous strength in his massive superhuman muscles drains away. Hell. Step by step, the atomic monster in human form moves forward. Finally, he stops, and his thin lips curl in a deadly smile. This is the end, Superman. In a moment, you die. Now! Now! Sharp explosion, a blinding white hot flash that seems to from the Atom Man's meshed fingers. Jagged green sparks that strike against Superman's wielding body like miniature bolts of lightning. Is this the end? As the one and only survivor of the amazing civilization that once flourished on the planet Krypton finally met his master? As we continue now, the Atom Man, his gloved hands raised before him, advances on his shocked and helpless victim. Listen. This is the end for you, Superman. No. The end! No! Never again will you interfere with our plans! Now, Germany will rise from its ashes and enslave the world! No! Keep away from me! You're through! Finished! Keep away! My atomic power is destroying you! You're mad, Miller! Stay away! Oh! I can't stand! Oh! So, the great Superman is on his knees! If only Teufel could see you. Uh, now! Die, Superman! No! Die! Stop it! I can't stand it! Oh. Uh. Advancing to where Superman has fallen to his hands and knees, mortally stricken, the other man points the fingers of his meshed metal gloves, and an unending chain of flashing jacket green sparks strike against the Man of Steel's limp body. Oh. Oh. Die, Superman! Die! Oh, I, I can't. I, I, oh. His head sinking, his eyes closing, Superman hears a voice. A voice that somehow breaks through the mist of his waning consciousness. A voice that calls to him desperately. You can't die now. You can't. All you ever fought for, justice, the rights of man will be lost. Die, Superman! I, die like a beaten dog! I can't stand anymore. You've got to stand it. You must. Make one last effort. Get through the door to the beach outside. Oh, I... I can't. Why? Oh, my strength is gone. I, I can't. You must. Get outside. Get away and recover your strength. Then tear that box from his throat. It controls his power. You must do it. Hurry. This is the end of you, Superman. Die. Somehow, from somewhere in his wrecked, tortured body, uh, Superman finds the strength to raise himself from his knees, to stagger, reeling like a drunken man through the open door to the beach. And raised, the Atom Man pursues him. Uh, you can't get away, you fool! You're finished! Uh, finished, do you hear? Uh, Only a few more seconds and you're through! As the Atom Man pursues the reeling man of steel, the stream of jagged green death pouring from his meshed hands misses its mark. Striking the beach and exploding a torrent of sand high into the air. A huge crater opens up and down into it tumble the Man of Steel and the Atom Man, where they tangle in mortal combat. Now oh, I'll finish you! No! No! That box on your throat! I must get it! His arms like lead, his fingers numbed, the Man of Steel paws at the converter on the Atom Man's throat. Almost reaches it, but the Atom Man twists away, trips, turns, and is temporarily hidden from his prey by a deluge of sand, which falls between and around them, forming a maze of small hills and dunes. Now, my chance. Get away before he finds me. Where are you? You can't escape. 
Must. Where are you? Must get away. Must get strength back. <sighs> Great chest oh. heaving, his eyes burning like live coal. Oh. Superman drags himself up the sandy slope of the crater, while the Atom Man, seeking him wildly at the maze of dunes, points his hands this way and that, blasting vast new craters in the beach. Where are you, Superman? Curiously, the Atom Man hunts for his prey. Finally sees him staggering toward the forest. Shouting triumphantly, he races after him. Now I've got you! Stop, you fool! Stop! Oh, if I can reach the woods and lose it! Oh. Again, the Atom Man points his meshed hands toward the Man of Steel, sending atomic lightning flashing into the forest beyond the beach. Great trees twist as in a violent earthquake and hurtle skyward, trailing masses of white groups like giant twisting snakes. One huge hook flung high into the air crashes down on the staggering figure of Superman, pinning him to the beach. He shudders, clasping the thick trunk lying across his chest. Minutes ago, he could have hurled it far out into the gray ocean like a toothpick, but now his weakened hands only close over it, then fall away. Through dimming eyes, he can see the Atom Man approaching. One last convulsive heave and the giant tree rolls a few scant inches, but not enough. Now the Atom Man is closer, the eerie whine and crackling of the deadly atomic energy roaring in Superman's ears like some vast milestone, sucking him down into a bottomless pit. Now oh, I've got you, Superman! You can't escape again! This time you're finished! Ha 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 ha! Ah, it's Teufel! Hurry, Teufel! Hurry and see the end of Superman! Like a wolf closing in for the kill, the trifle races across the cratered, blasted beach to the edge of the forest where, trapped under a giant tree, all the great strength gone from his once mighty muscles, Superman lies prone, his eyes closed against the shaking earth, while the atom man hovers above him, jagged atomic lightning flashing from his meshed fingers to strike, and strike, and strike again at the limp body of the man of steel. As Superman lies helpless under the deadly atomic bombardment of the pitiless Atom Man, Jimmy Olsen is a prisoner in a shack in the woods nearby, guarded by Teufel's henchman Willie, an ox-shouldered, broken-nosed man in overalls. For several minutes they have heard explosions in the distance, and the sounds of giant trees being uprooted and crashing to earth. Now they feel the floor and walls of the shack begin to shake. Well, it's an earthquake or something. We've got to get out of here, mister. You mean I got it, not you, Olsen. Well, what do you mean? Teufel told me to keep you here till he got back. I ain't staying, but you are, see? I'm going to lock this door. No. Ken, the shack is going to cave in. Come on. Get back in there. Look out. Here comes the room. Oh! As the roof of the flimsy shack crashes down, a falling beam strikes Teufel's burly henchman on the back of the neck, felling him like an ox. Ducking, leaping wildly through the wreckage, Jimmy escapes into the forest. His heart pounding, he seeks some avenue of escape through the tall trees and underbrush. Spots a narrow, hardly perceptible trail and follows it. You can hear a dull rumbling all around him, increasing his fear. It's an earthquake. I, I gotta get out of here. I, I, I just gotta. Marching onward, the boy reporter tops a small rise and finds himself out of the woods. Below him is the sandy beach, gashed and cratered it as if two great armies had fought over it. And beyond that, the sullen gray sea. Panting, Jimmy pauses to catch his breath. Then suddenly, a new sound cuts through the rumble, drawing his attention to a scene on the beach below him. He stiffens, and turns ghastly pale. It, it's Teufel and, and Miller. Something shooting out of Miller's hands. Big green sparks like, like lightning. And they've got someone on the ground. They, they're killing him. I've got to get help. I've got to get help and quick. His hair standing on end, Jim Olsen wheels like a frightened deer and plunges back into the woods, his eyes wide with the horror of what he has seen. Onward he races, tripping, falling, picking himself up and plunging on through the forest, filled with that awesome rumbling. Meanwhile, on the lonely, devastated beach, the Teufel looks on with pleasure as the Atom Man continues to bombard the now unconscious body of Superman with the terrible, unleashed power of atomic energy pouring from his meshed fingers like devil's pitchforks. Is Superman finished? Did Jimmy Olsen witness the end of the great man of steel? Have Der Teufel and his human monster, the Atom Man, finally vanquished the heretofore unconquerable Superman? If they have, 
Who now can stop Teufel and his mad plan to rule the world? And as we continue now, he has come to a small clearing in which stands the log cabin of a trapper. Panting, he pounds on the door. Listen. <laughs> oh, I'll take it easy. I'm coming. What's all the rush, son? Excuse me. I'm Jim Olson. Can I can I use your phone? I ain't got no phone. Oh, golly. What'll I do? What's the matter? You look like you've been around. I gotta get get to a phone and call the police. Why? What happened? Oh, gosh, it's terrible. Green sparks were shooting out of Miller's hands. Green sparks? Yes. Like lightning. He was shooting them at some man on the ground, and, and Teufel was watching. Now, 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 wait a minute. What is all this about? Uh, you sure you ain't dreaming, son? Oh, please, mister, don't waste any more time. I saw it, I tell you. Well, where? On the beach. It was all ripped up like like an earthquake hit it. Big trees were knocked down. Oh, please, don't just stand there. The man might already be dead. Uh, now somebody's dead. Uh, but listen, son, you'd better sit down and take a rest. Oh, I'm all right, I tell you. Look. Here's my wallet. I'm a reporter for the Daily Planet. Yeah, let's see the wallet. Here, look at it. Hurry. Uh, yeah, it does seem like you're a reporter. Well, of course I am. Please, mister, take me to a phone. Well, okay, come on. I'll take you to Sam Tyler. He's game warden. See what he thinks about all this. Has he got a telephone? Yep. Yeah. He's about a mile from here. As the reluctant trapper leads Jimmy Olsen through the woods, a few miles away on the beach, the Atom Man, commanded by Der Teufel, has turned the switch on the converter at his throat, stopping the flow of atomic power through his metal-gloved hands. His eyes blazing, he stands by impatiently as Teufel bends over the limp, motionless figure of Superman. All about is a scene of chaos. Great trees ripped from the forest above the beach, split and blackened as if by lightning, lie all about in crazy profusion. The vast beach from the great sea to the edge of the forest is gashed and torn into deep trenches and craters, almost as if it had sustained an artillery barrage. Only the wind and the low roar of surf break the silence of night, as finally the atom man steps forward impatiently, and again speaking in the normal voice of Henry Miller. Well, Teufel, are you satisfied that he's dead? He is not dead. What? He must be. I tell you, he is not. His heart still beats. Oh, I faintly, but it's still deep. That's impossible. Why, that huge tree that lay across his legs, it's entirely disintegrated. But Superman still lives. What must we do to kill him? What? He can't be alive. Did you stop saying that, you fool? I tell you, he still lives. See for yourself. Put your ear to his chest. I can't hear any heartbeat. Listen again. I still can't hear it. I tell you, he's dead. He's stone dead. Now, come on, Toy, but we've got things to do, big things. We can do nothing until Superman is dead. But he is. I say he is not, and he must die. He must. Everything depends on it. I tell you, be be quiet. Wait, I have my pistol. Yeah, that will finish him. (laughs) You're wasting your time. The bullets just bounce off his body. (laughs) Yeah, they cannot penetrate. What will we do? If you'll just listen to me. I listen to you. Are you out of your mind? It is you who must listen to me. Yes, I don't know about that. Then you had better know, fool blockhead. Have you forgotten that it is I, the Teufel, who gave you your great power, and that I, the Teufel, can also take it away? Can you? Yeah, I can. Wait. Wait. We must not quarrel now. Together, the world is ours. But first... This tiny spark of life which remains in Superman must be extinguished. There must be a way. I tell you, he's dead, but if it'll make you feel any better, I'll turn on the converter again. Nine. You must not. Why not? The atomic energy of the kryptonite in your blood can be exhausted. What's that? You have already consumed a great deal of it today, and I cannot give you any more. My kryptonite can be exhausted. You didn't tell me that. I'm telling you now. That is why we must dispose of Superman permanently, so that he cannot interfere with us. But if the kryptonite can be exhausted, how... In case the sight of Superman's dead body is not enough, we need only one more demonstration of your power. We need only wipe out Metropolis, and America and the rest of the world will surrender to us. But suppose that isn't enough. Suppose America and England and Russia won't surrender at once. And I've exhausted the atomic power of the kryptonite. In that case, there's always the Scarlet Widow. The Scarlet Widow, who's she? An arch-criminal who owns the other three pieces of kryptonite. She does? Yeah, she... Ah, I have it. What? How to finish Superman. How? Oh. I will tell you. Despite his amazing powers, he is still a man, a human being. He requires food and drink. He will take him to the shack in the woods where Willie is guarding young Olsen. 
We will dispose of Olsen, and then we will keep Superman in a coma until he starves to death. That's ridiculous. It's a lot of needless trouble. I tell you, he's as dead as he'll ever be right now. I say he is not. Now listen to me. Boyfriend, you're crazy. I crazy? How dare you speak to me that way? Your power has come to your head. If you can't see that Superman is finished, you are crazy, and I'm taking matters into my own what? hands. Listen to me, you... No, Twyford, you listen to me. Superman is done for, and our next step is to destroy Metropolis, then call on the world to surrender to us and to Germany. You dare to give me orders! I, who gave you your power... Yes, you gave me my power, but I've got it now, and I intend to use it as I see fit. I don't need you anymore, Twyford. What? After all I have done for you, you dare to defy me? Yes, Keep your hand away from that gun. Uh, now, wait. Oh, you, you think I would shoot you, my atom man? I know you would. You shot my father. You murdered him in cold blood. No, that is a lie. It's the truth. General Bromberg told me. I've been waiting for this chance, Teufel, but I didn't dare make a move because I needed you. But now I don't need you anymore. You do. You are helpless without me. And the kryptonite in your blood is exhausted. You told me where to get some more, remember? <laughs> The Scarlet Widow. Oh, no. Yes, and now you're going to die, Teufel, the same way Superman died. No, don't touch that converter. Don't touch it. Too late, Teufel. It's building up. You have killed Too late, Teufel. This is the end for you. Throwing the switch on the converter at his throat, the other man raises his metal-gloved hands toward the Teufel, who snatches his gun from his pocket. On the lonely, ravaged beach... As Superman lies motionless on the ground, the Atoman and his former master, Der Teufel, have quarreled violently. Drunk with his own power, the Atoman turned the switch on the converter at his throat, releasing the deadly atomic energy of the kryptonite in his blood. As Teufel snatched the pistol from his pocket, the Atoman raised his mesh-gloved hands toward him. This is the end of you, Teufel! Nine! Nine! Ah! <laughs> That's all, Teufel. You're finished. Now we're even, Teufel. You killed my father and I killed you. <laughs> now I have the power to rule the world. What's that? Sounds like police sirens coming this way. <laughs> I'll stop them. No, no, Teufel said that I can exhaust the kryptonite. I'll have to be careful until I can get more. I'll just be very superman in this hole. And get away through the woods back to my troubles. Now to cover him up. I don't want him found and the police warned what to expect. <laughs> so I'm ready. I'll let them find Teufel, though. They'll think lightning killed him and knock down all these trees. There. There, they'll never know Superman is under there. Just smooth it out a little. Oh. Come. Time for me to go. <laughs> goodbye, Superman. And goodbye to you, too, Teufel. <laughs> Swiftly, the Atom Man fades into the woods, leaving the dead Teufel lying on the beach, and Superman buried deep under the sand. The brilliant half-mad Nazi scientist has met his end at last, destroyed by the deadly atomic monster he himself created in his frenzied dream of ruling the world. But has Superman, too, been destroyed? And is the Atom Man free now to roam the world? To destroy further? Fellows and girls, our story is far from over. There's much tense action and excitement ahead. So don't fail to listen Monday, when events take a new and even more strange and startling turn.